Welcome back. Before we get started, I have to fix the most important thing in this shop. Don doesn't know how to correctly set an air conditioning unit. There we go. Well, welcome back to the almost never ending nut story. Close. Really close. Today we're going to do some fine tinkering and measuring it and make sure that this base is right. We don't have to do any more uh, shimming or milling. I made the other one just a little bit thicker just because of that problem. So now we're going to put this together and measure it. I'm going to use my cast iron surface plate that I have for traveling. It's a lot easier than a granite surface plate, you know, a small one. This is a cast iron I made. Works good. But first, I'm doing a little cleanup. I want to use the lift table to uh, move that lead screw around in its housing. My shoulder's kind of messed up. Started physical rehab for it yesterday. So I'm trying to be careful. Rotator cuff, slight injury. Just want to not mess it up. If you don't have one of these lift tables from your shop, get you one. Hell, I got two. They make good work tables, lifting things around. You don't have to do a lot of messing around with them. Pump up easy. They're not that expensive. Remember which way this goes. This end goes that way. Old axles and 16 surface well for threading. Uh, glad that is over. And it wasn't such a it wasn't such a hard thing to do. I've done hundreds of them. It's just the cost of the material is so dead gum expensive. It gives you second thoughts about everything you do, and then you know instead of just going in there and getting after it, you just anyway, it's done. Find some. I'm going to put this on so I can use the table. Now, the tail stock runs on the second set of ways on most lathes. And here's a tip for you when you're looking to measure the wear in a bed, the tail stock. A doesn't go all the way up to the, the chuck usually, so that area of the bed on those ways is usually pristine. may have some dents and stuff in it, but once you stone those off, you got a good reference point. Whereas the outer ways, the one the saddle travels on, you know, most of its wear is up near the chuck. So if you want to have a good starting point to measure those ways, you start back here at the end where there's almost, it's never seen any travel. Just a little tip. Oh, oh this ain't going to work. I might have to go back to rehab if I do that. That's where the little jib crane can come in handy. video of making one of these. Now, I stole the idea of the design from somebody, and I don't know who it was, but they came up with a really neat design for a jib crane. Instead of having bearings on the floor and thus bearings for it to rotate, or just a piece of uh, 
pipe on the ground with the sleeve. I mean, that works, but it's just not elegant. This guy, I'll just have to take some pictures and show you. Oh my God. Pardon the scruffy face. I just finished a play where the director made us shave and going back to normal me. Anyway, this guy came up with the idea of using a trailer hitch ball, a two and five sixteenths ball, mounted on a steel plate on the ground to insert into the uh, socket that you make for the inside of that pipe. You're going to need a lathe to make one, but you make that inset, put it inside a piece of four inch pipe, and it sets on top of that ball. And you put a lot of grease in there. When I made the insert, I bored a hole going up and packed that full of grease. It should grease forever. And the top up there is another little easy thing. The pipe goes all the way up and I made another insert that fit on the inside of the pipe. And so this thing just swivels around that pipe up there and it's got a trigger hitch ball on the bottom. It's nice, simple, easy. You mount it to your floor with concrete bolts or this one's got a, a, a an L bracket on the floor so you can bolt into the side of the, the, the wall. And then up there he went and took his sheetrock out and put a piece of metal all the way across and then we bolted it into the wall. It ain't going nowhere. Anyway, I'll put a link to some stuff when we were making these. Bigger lathes, you know, when you, you talk about lay size, <laughs> changes quick. You get a little 10 inch lathe. And frankly, I'm not like the people over on Tax Machinists. I think there's a place for day near any two. And by that, I mean, if you, all you can afford is an atlas or that's all you got, you can make stuff with it, but not very fast. But I don't. Look down at some people who only have atlas rays. Yeah, use what you can get. See what I'm doing. Now we need to let you down.
like kind of tools, you can move mountains. In fact, that was a piece of cake for an old guy. I'm 66 and got a bum shoulder, but moving that. Now that's one heck of a tailstock. Bigger lace, industrial lace have bigger tailstocks. So I like a South Bend 10. I had a heavy 10 and you can pick it up in both hands. This one, I can't even budge it. Sort of like, you know, this is a 16 inch lathe and the other lathe was a 10 inch, but in the world of lathes, that really doesn't mean a lot. This one can swing 16 inches, but technically 18 and a half. The 10 inch I had could swing 12 inches. But everything on this one is 10 times the size. It's more like earthquakes, you know, like a, a magnitude 7 earthquake. Pretty powerful. If you go up to a magnitude 8, it's not just 7 to 8, it's 300 times more powerful. And then if you go from an 8 to a 9, like they had up in Alaska a couple hundred years ago, it's not just 300 times more powerful, it's 900 times more powerful than the 7. That's the kind of way it is with Don is much better at tearing apart machines than I am. I always think I can remember where everything goes. And he puts it all in little baggies. Do what Don does, not me. That's pretty easy. Now, you don't see many of these around anymore. But granite's kind of taken over. This one is a cast iron surface plate. And got it used. Gave it a ride on the planer. And then scraped it. And it's as good as I can get it. And I like it because it's a heck of a lot lighter and easier for me to carry around than a regular 16 by 12 or 16 by 24 4 inch thick granite plate. And for doing things like this, they're, they're perfect. This one on the back, you see all the casting on it. It's got three points right here which when you're dealing with precision, three points is where it's at. You know, three points define a plane. When you're scraping something like a bed or uh, you don't put it on four blocks, you put it on three. And that way all the pressure is equaled out amongst what, along the surface of what you're scraping. Now, most, in the old days, the really good uh, granite surface plates came with marks where they finished them up on those three points. And so you knew where to put the marks on your holder. And a lot of the ones I see today are just angle iron tables with, you set the... Uh, stone down inside them and who knows what you're distorting. They're not even pressure. So always look for a table and a stone that is supported on three points. Being how this is cast iron, it's got one disadvantage that the uh, uh, stone ones do and it this sucker will rust. So in between uses I put a real heavy coat of bow shield on it. 
so when I get ready to use it, I clean the bow shield off and then I'll redo it so it doesn't rust. Just a little carburetor cleaner. Get all the stuff off. Sometimes I use this as a, a roller for my roller when I'm inking something up. But about 75 to 95% of the time, it sits in a climate controlled shop in a drawer so nothing hurts it. But it is hard to make one of these. A lot of bow shield on there. Okay. Pretty clean. The reason I brought this, let me show you on the nuts. The reason I brought this was so I can check the base height on this nut, well, this nut. I measured the best I could on this nut when I was recreating it in CAD. And then when I put it on the CNC mill, I was hoping it was close, but I knew it could probably be off in this dimension. So. What I wanted to do was go ahead and once it was threaded, put it on the shaft and then measure each side of that shaft to get the correct height of this compared to this one. So the reason I'm doing that is this nut is hidden in this machine and it's going to be a booger bear to put any kind of shim or anything behind it. You could put a shim to make it go farther away, but you can't bring it back towards the table if you need to. So I'm going to measure it so it's the same as this one and that way that'll eliminate that need. Now this motion is easily taken care of by the screws that go in the back here and hold it. It's a bit of pain in my butt. And mainly because the dang expensive casting material. You know, if it was a piece of cast iron, I'd use it for practice, but you can't do it when it's that, you know, expensive. Unless you're getting paid for it, you charge somebody, and that's just a lot of money. So what I'm going to do, so that you guys can see, is turn this around a little bit. that this needs to be more level so we'll put this out here this needs to go down some I'll bring it onto the nut You know, I think you guys would be better if you moved over there. What I want to do is thread this nut onto here. got some play in it. There's not that much up and down play. But boy, there's a lot that way. So I think this is pretty flat on this base, just eyeball. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a light and I'm going to shine it underneath 
and see if I could see any day. See if I see any light coming out the other side, which I don't. So that tells me this thing isn't tilted on the plate. I'll go find another instrument here to measure. Don's back to lunch. I gotta go. Don's back. Say hi, Don. Hey guys, what's up? Don't be nice to me. Brought me a hamburger. Hey. Of course, I'm not supposed to be eating hamburgers, and he knows that. He still what brought you it. You asked for it. You, 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 you. He asked for a hamburger. Well, you wouldn't give heroin to a guy that was asking you to the attic, would you? Sure. Well, the next time I'll bring you a salad. <laughs> oh, God. Mm -hmm. I've been talking to my wife, haven't no. you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, back to where I was. You noticed I took a light and I shined up underneath here. Oh, we have to talk, sir, about when you buy instruments that are supposed to be fine. I ran my hand off over the base of this, cleaning it off, and I put it on my very, 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 very work-intensive surface plate, and I heard a grind. So then I turned it over and looked. You have rust spots on oh, the yeah, bottom. Oh, yeah, see that. Oh, yeah. I saw that. That's been sitting in there for months. Well, now you're going to have to do some work on that before it's useful. Yeah, it's good. But pitting and high spots and... Don't shouldn't put, have high spots, should have low spots if you've got that. <laughs> the rust expands. And so now every one of those dots is an expansion. The minimum you can do is that's stone it. Bad. Yeah, that's all I'm going to do. Not that bad. This is a comparative type tester. You can't tell if it's two and a half inches off the surface plate of the comparative. This I can tell, but this one needs work. Actually, it might have been like that one got it. I never even looked at it. Never never looked at it. Well, when you look at things, look at that. For 60 bucks? I'm good. But if it's no good, 60 bucks doesn't help you. Oh, that's good. Just a little bit. Get my handy dandy camera out. Gauges that measure. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. When you look down, I couldn't see any light coming underneath it, but now I don't even have to because you can see it's higher on the left. And this is higher on the left. So what that tells me. is this is taller than this one is. So if I were to make this jacked up over here to where that one fits flush, we could see how much needs to come off of this one. Because he's over there trying to booger that thing up. He's booging it up. Boogering everything up over there. She already feels good. Anyway, that was pretty flat. It's a little bit too high. A little bit. Oh, 
Yeah. Wait a minute, you might have got it. Pretty good to me. You and your magic fingers. Can I say? That's better too. That feels, by the base feels pretty good. He just thought he was good. He just thought he was good. Now it's a little bit high here. Well, I mean, oh, there. The, the nut might not be exactly perfect either, you know. I mean, you're, you're on a surface plate that's perfect, that nut. No, the nut had no light through it before. Yeah. It's all a matter of this tilt. Mm -hmm. So what do you need to go and, and this down? may be tilted one way, and this is tilted another, but it doesn't matter because I'm trying to get that flat surface so shim flat that, here, so, so that. then I can measure over here. So we need to shim this. Uh, give me a cigarette paper. I don't have it. I don't have any cigarette paper. I did not. I, have, I, have I know, I'm a fabricator. I'm not a machinist. Exactly. Exactly. Just, that, that, just, just a tad. That, that's, we're beyond the rim of thin tape. We're down into the thousandths of an inch. Now I have a feeling that you find that. Read me your feeler gauges. Yeah, I'm looking for Chair, please. I got to get down here and get to the side. This is Don's grandson. What's your name? Cameron. Cameron. Are you smarter than Don? Uh, uh, smarter wise than two different the things. things. <laughs> smarter wise than two different things. And two different things. Which ones? Uh, I don't know. I really couldn't tell you. Careful what you say, buddy. You ain't paid for your radio yet. That's true. He hasn't paid. Bing that key for four. four. They're not all rusty, are they? Yeah. Probably. Maybe I didn't like that. It was almost free. Almost free. Yeah. It's another one of them things that almost free isn't worth much at all. Just need to be cleaned up. These are metric ones. Mm -hmm. Almost free, like I said. They don't have English on the other side? Yeah, they do. Duh. I just wanted people to feel sorry for me. Ah. Okay. I'm like having to use rusty bananas. Now I'm just going to lift that plate a little bit and see where it is in the middle. That's six thirteen thousandths. Let's go to eighteen. You know I measured that nut pretty good. If we're we're sitting no, here in the 18,000s. No, it, it is. That's what I'm saying. As long as it's too high, it's fine. Well, too low, you just put a shim on it. Yeah, but it's a bit easier to just cut Or hit it, it with a hammer and make enough dents in it. Mm -hmm. You 
and I wouldn't do that. That's what he says now, folks. So how do you know when you lift it up, it's right? Because I'm watching, you guys can't see this, I'm watching this line right here. And by lifting the surface plate up, I'm making it conform to the base of this. So I know that it's parallel to the base of this now, on this screw. Your viewers might want to know that. Well, I think you just... Before somebody makes a comment. I just thought you might want to know. Okay. Well, your gauge here goes up to 35 thousandths. Goes more than that if you put them together. Well, unless we tear it apart. I tell you what, I can put this one together with it and that one. The way they're stacked. The 35 is at, well, no, wait a minute. 30, 32, and then it jumps to 35 on this side. That's getting close. Would you bring that camera over here, please? I'm going to turn you guys off. Try to stay out of the way here so it doesn't focus on me. So what I'm doing is I'm stacking a couple of these so I'll have enough. I've got 35 plus whatever I got underneath there. Then I'm raising this up just a tad so that it's tied up against this. That means if this is in a line means this nut is parallel to the bottom of this nut, which is needing some more stuff under it. You hold it for you when you measure it to the rock. I want it to rock. So I can start over here and I can feel it in the middle. That is right there in the middle. It's good. And this is that. So that's 35 plus 1.5 plus 3. Say let's just make it 40 thousands. Well, we can take like 35 and then check it again. year. How can you say that? Free labor. I'm just responding to me being in a hurry. Well, you haven't even finished the rest of it. How the rest of it I can throw together in a, about an hour and a half. The question becomes, why would you want to? I'm doing that thing for me. Would these be you need to spin it off of there. The other way. The left hand nut goes backwards. Why are you taking that one off? Can. Okay. 
Forty thousandths. I wouldn't take all forty off. I'd take a little less and check it again. Between 38 and 52 is all we're shooting for. Yeah. That is a safe to know with the insert. Can you get some new cutters, insert cutters? Yeah. It's forget, the, forget the face mill. Did you get some better carbide nail bits? No, just that one that we've been using. That's all the one? Where is it? Probably behind it somewhere. I hadn't put it up, so we probably took it off. The one you've been using. It's not over here. I didn't take it off. This is the one we used last. It might be the one I pawned last week. Yeah, it could be. Oh, here's the one. There's the face mount with the low insert in there. That one cuts pretty decent. I was cutting those big steel blocks underneath the lathe with that. You try it. It's not all the way up when it does that. It won't go any farther. Well, it should work. This thing's a piece of junk. It's out of air. You have enough air coming through. Yeah. It worked a little while ago. Pretty sure the air home. It gets all loose and you gotta tighten it all up. That's what happens. And then we get my little ladder. You're gonna have to do something. You uh, broke it, Steve. I did not break it. Dead. You guys aren't even watching. What's up? He's got an air driven collet closure. Don hasn't rebuilt this machine yet, but. I can't change to anything because it just seems to be all messed up up there. Right, it is a curve. I don't know how they put their name on that. Might need to lock tight those things in. Yeah, we May take a while, folks. It won't take too long. It's just about three or four screws. Two. Is that one? Yeah. 
sponsored by Jack in the Box? Huh? Is that sponsored by Jack in the Box? No, I didn't sponsor by Jack. And they all this. Come loose. This one I don't know. Yet. Still not coming on. Wait, this. This is not right. Oh, it came off. Hold on, I gotta loosen back up. I see the problem. I see the problem. Turned. So can you turn screws and talk at the same time? Yes. Sure. Tell them what you've been doing to your shop. I've been sliding it. Let's see. All right, actually wait, let me tighten these up now real good. That's all you guys get. He's been siding it. I'm finished. I can finish siding. Well, you can tell them what you did before you finished. I sided it. <laughs> I can't help it. Dude. You noticed I, I started wearing my gun again? I just again. can't help it, man. I know, smart asses. I saw, no, uh, I saw a sign that said, fresh sarcasm sold here. That's None me. Of that old stuff. That's me. No, I just got all the siding done and the trim. And I got the front caulked. And I still waiting on my garage door, which the factory hadn't shipped it yet, just to make them. But I'm almost totally done with the outside. Excuse me. That should work. Now, for how long, I don't know, but just don't be heavy handed on the top. Gently. I'm you don't I have haven't to, done anything. The harder you put this over, it doesn't make any difference. I was just pushing it a little. There. See if that works. No, I gotta turn that. Okay, it's turn on. This is cutting more on the back side than it is the front. Yeah. So. But even though it cut all of this cleaned up, this corner here was still low. Well, it could have been bent. Who yeah. knows? It started at 36.
Well, we found out your mill is out of tram. I don't never tram that. I never used it. But you did. I thought you borrowed my ring. Oh, I did. Did I? No. Yeah, you, you borrowed my ring. I saw you ring at your shop, but I'm not. I don't remember putting on this. No, I loaned it to you. Well, we've taken thirty-two thousand off of. So. I would test it. Where are we at? I tested it, but I got to go work on the gate. No, go work and do do what you got to do. Meet money. Say goodbye, Don. Bye, guys.